anthropology, ethnography, psychology, the study about us, without us, our spirits, our cultures, our traditions through your lens, deconstructing our struggles while our communities are dismantled and left in rubble. Today's podcast from a poverty scholar is said with love, even this piece that I always do to open up uh, people school, poor people led scholars teaching folks with different forms of race and class privilege about movement work, about life, about our own resistance and how to walk with us, talk with us and be with us in our own liberation. Um, So today's podcast from a poverty scholar is said with love and respect and also with a plea to listen, to listen in. Recently, the sci-fi horror movie that is The Trump a Clown has taken a new step, um, which he continues to do all the time. The Hatchet Man for the Aristoc Crazy, um, incarcerating our babies. Nothing new, just up-leveled in a different kind of hell. Uh, but for those of you who already know, and most of you conscious folk, uh, again, our babies have been separated from poor folks from black and brown and indigenous peoples for years, for centuries, behind colonizer borders and plantation walls, behind child separation services and the plantation prison system, behind poverty itself and the crime of being poor and being of color in the stolen indigenous territory and for being on different sides of the false colonizer borders, the lines in the sand that the same people have put all over Mama Earth under Obama. Hundreds of children have been separated and families, thousands, uh, under all the politicsers before. But that said, in this particular moment of horror, a lot of beautiful folks have stood up, have put their bodies on the line, have done things like closing dissension centers and creating actions in front of the plantation, prison, concentration camps that they're building for all of our poor folks, all of our black and brown bodies, all of our disabled folks, and doing beautiful work and showing up and perhaps, and maybe most importantly, um, not necessarily moving with enough of what we say at Poor Magazine Uh, decolonizer's guide to a humble revolution, the humility that it takes to do this work alongside poor folks. So recently, that said, there has been some moments in the actions and the activism that weren't respecting the folks who were already there on those front lines, moments where indigenous peoples on their own land weren't respected and asked protocol to start to start um, actions or allowed to speak. Moments where indigenous and black and brown elders were told that they couldn't even necessarily be at places um, because somebody else didn't know them. And on and on the list goes. Simple mistakes that oftentimes new folks in the movement make without necessarily knowing that they're even mistakes. And so these are said, and this this moment is said with love. But at the other end of it, in the Bay Area, we just recently had what would be considered a quote-unquote win. The sheriff of West Contra Costa County, Richmond, came out this week and said that due to the protests and other things, he was actually going to close the or end the contract with ICE in his concentration camp, I mean detention facility. Um, Now, on its face, this made a lot of folks cheer, um, even including myself, for half a second. And then my poverty scholar hat went back on, and I was like, wait a minute. As a poor person, that just means that I can't visit my family. When I personally did three months for the act of being unhoused in uh, Santa Rita County Jail, we cheen Oakland, at least... The lawyer that my mama found, the poor people lawyer, could actually access me. Uh, Some of the 
resources that she was able to save up could get to me. Um, and so those little tiny things when you have nothing, and this is the important thing to point out, those little tiny things when you have nothing are actually the most important. And the most important lesson is at the end of the day, all of these families now can't visit their their loved ones. Was uh, had the blessing of being in witness at the release not transfer press conference held at West Contra Costa County today, um, held by beautiful folks like Debbie, uh, who works a uh, Reverend Debbie, who works to make sure that the voices of poor families are heard uh, out in West Contra Costa County in Richmond, that in fact there was many families from Russia to Mexico who have already lost their loved ones. Uh, They've already been shipped out to places like Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, and even beyond. That in the quote-unquote closing of the detention facility and the ending of the contract with ICE, what it really just means is that children and parents and sisters and brothers and wives and husbands are now not even able to visit the people that they love. So it's already happening. And that all of these families were devastated by this move and have no recourse. So again, I repeat, when you have nothing, little things and everything matters, right? Um, Similarly, the... You know, the consciousness, the work of the movement of the new warriors who entering or entering the movement, you know, and beyond might think, oh, great, the Bay Area no longer has one of these horrible places to incarcerate our babies. Right. So somehow our hands are collectively cleaner. But you see they're Of course, they're not because actually you could argue that they're dirtier because now we're even further away and that our. Our families who are still detained, because we're still working with ICE, are in fact now even under more duress, under more stress, and under more violence of the separation nation. So I say all that to say there can be a way. Um, I was speaking to another fierce warrior in the movement, the movement who works all the time against these false borders, and uh, they were saying that one of the things that needs to happen is a is a organized strategy. So I'd like to put a challenge out to all folks who might hear this, new and current uh, warriors against these false borders, against the stolen land, and against the incarceration of all of our people, to email poormag at gmail.com. That's poormag, P-O-O-R-M-A-G, at gmail.com. And um, and that we will just act as a someone to to filter in and to bring people together, which is oftentimes what we do as fellow poor folks from all parts of Mother Earth, both uh, migrante warriors with and without papers, uh, disabled, black and brown, and currently houseless and formerly houseless um, of all colors and all parts of this nation, all generations. Oftentimes what we do is just try to bring folks together. So if, in fact, you're thinking of doing an action, maybe you could uh, email us and we could bring you together with other folks and then their strategies could be coordinated. Because sadly, as we all know collectively, this trauma, this brutality, this violence um, of this aristocracy, this hypocrisy of the... Even the people and the politricsters, and then all of us who are just trying to help. The key part is not harm. We are co- going to be continuing to have this same situation happen for a minute. And I think the most important lesson to be learned right now is that we actually really have to not only look behind, below, next to, and beside us, but we have to talk to each other. So that's my challenge, my podcast from a poverty scholar today. I in no way am anything that I say with hate, but always and most importantly with love 
respect, liberation, and hope for change in all of us.